Well, it's the middle of May, and after a couple of weeks of warm, sunny weather, it's turned cold and grey. Nevertheless, I thought it would be apposite to read a short section from a great book by Edward Thomas called The South Country. I once saw a girl of seven or eight years old walking alone down a long grassy path in an old garden. On one hand rose a peaceful long slope of down, on the other, beyond the filberts, a high hedge shut out all but the pale blue sky with white clouds resting on its lower mist like water lilies on a still pool. Turning her back to the gabled house and its attendant beeches, she walked upon the narrow level path of perfect grass. The late afternoon sun fell full upon her, upon her brown head and her blue tunic, and upon the flowers of the borders at either side, the lowly white arabis foaming wild, the pansy, the white narcissus, the yellow jonquil and daffodil, the dark smouldering wallflowers, the tall yellow leopard bane, the tufts of honesty among the still dewy leaves of larkspur and columbine. But here and there as she walked the light was dimmed by the clusters of cool white humming cherry blossom hanging out in the hot sky. In front of her the cherry trees seemed to meet and make a corridor of dark stems on either side, paved green and white and gold, and roofed by milky white clouds that embowered the clear wild warble of black gaps. Further on the flowers ceased and the grass was shadowed by new-leaved beeches and at length involved in an uncertain mist of trees and shadows of trees, and there the cuckoo cried. For the child there was no end to the path. She walked slowly, at first picking a narcissus or two, or stooping to smell a flower, and letting her hair fall over it to the ground. But soon she was content only to brush the tips of the flowers with her outstretched hands or rising on tiptoe, to force her head up amongst the lowest branches of cherry bloom. Then she did nothing at all but gravely walk out into the shadow and into eternity, dimly foreknowing her life's days. She looked forward as one day she would look back over a broad sea of years, and in a drowsy, haunted gloom, full of the cuckoo's note, saw herself going always on and on, among the interlacing shadows of trees, trunks and branches and joys and pleasures and pains and sorrows that must have an end, she knew not how. She stopped, not venturing into that strange future under the beeches. She stared into the mist where hovered the phantoms of the big girl, the young woman, the lover, which in turn she was to become under the last cherry tree something went out of her into the shadow, and those phantoms fed upon her blood as she stood still. But presently in the long beach corridors the gloom began to lighten and move and change to a glinting blue that approached her. Pioi! shouted the peacock, now close at hand. Pioi! Pioi! as he passed her by, and turning she also shouted, Pioi! frightening the cuckoo from the beaches as she ran back along the flowers to the house.